Now look at here. I'm not one of these highly educated, easily speaking, kind of intellectual guys. I'm a U.S. Army combat paratrooper. And this is what I want to say. This is the simple message that we should be sending to Iran. When Iran stands up and they share death to America, all we need to say is, you first. What message are we sending? What message are we sending when we sit down at the table with the number one state sponsor of terrorism? What message are we sending when we sit down with a country that is holding four Americans hostage? No different from the last time we had a weakling in the White House when we had 53 Americans being held hostage. What message do we send when we create this false narrative about either we sign this piece of paper that just the same meant nothing to Adolf Hitler, it means nothing to the Ayatollahs, or the only other alternative is to go to war. Well, let me tell you something. The United States of America is about victors. The United States of America is about champions. The United States of America does not surrender to a bunch of black robed, crazed clerics that want to see us destroyed. What does it say about us when we sit down and we sign an agreement with a country like Iran so that they can become an economic power, so that in five to eight years, when the U.N. arms embargo is taken away, they can become a military power, and then in 10 to 15 years, they will become a nuclear power. But yet we stand up and say we're going to cut our United States Army by 40,000. We are the smallest Marine Corps since World War I, the smallest Navy since 1917, the smallest and the oldest Air Force since we created the modern Air Force. What message does President Obama send to these people over in Iran is not the message that was sent to Britain 239 years ago at Lexington Green when we fired the shot that was heard around the world. What message does it say to radical Islamic terrorists when we have people that go and kill our unarmed men and women at recruiting stations, at reserve component stations here in the United States of America, and we can't figure out if the kid was depressed, if the kid was on drugs? Well, hell no. He was a daggum terrorist. That's what he was. Now, I got to tell you something. I got to hurry up and get off this stage because uh, I got to go to a fundraiser and a Broadway show. What type of commander in chief do you have when Americans have lost their lives on our soil? And it's more important to come up here and take in a play than go to Chattanooga, Tennessee and lower the flag half mass over the White House. It's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. Alexander the Great had a fantastic quote. And he said, I would not fear an army of lions if they were led by sheep. But I would fear an army of sheep if they were to be led by a lion. This great nation is a nation of lions that is currently being led by the greatest of sheep that we have ever seen in our 239 years of existence. How dare Barack Obama, how dare John Kerry, how dare Valerie Jarrett, or any of these other charlatans that occupy Washington, D.C., surrender this great constitutional republic to the Republic of Iran. Ladies and gentlemen, it was said in December 1775 by Thomas Paine that these are the times that try men's souls, that the sunshine patriot and the summer soldier will shrink from his duties. But to those who will make a stand, those of you that are here in Times Square, you will deserve the love and admiration of all men and women. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not over. You being here sends a message 
that the United States of America, I don't care who is occupying the White House, we're not surrendering our liberty, our freedom, our way of life. I want President Barack Obama to know one thing. You may say that you have done something that no one else has ever done. You know why no one else has ever done it? Because it's a damn stupid thing that you just did. And if people are upset because of what I'm saying, I really don't care. Because I had a father that stood in World War II. I had an older brother that stood and was wounded at Quezon. I gave 22 years of my life to make sure that that great beacon of liberty, freedom, and democracy continues to stand. And I have a nephew, I have friends that are still serving on the front lines. And my commitment is to the oath that I took on 31 July 1982 to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and to bear true faith and allegiance to the same. It's not to anybody's historic event. It's not for anyone to have some special exhibit in their presidential library. It's to make sure that the enemies of America and the enemies of Israel are crushed and brought to their knees. God bless you all. God bless America. God bless Israel. Thank you.